<laughs> Hello and welcome to Being Wendy. Here we feel the fear and we do it anyway every single day. <laughs> My name is Wendy and if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button to get notified anytime I post a video. I promise it's free and it really supports and encourages me to keep creating this content. Hello, so this is the official vlog of the tour from Nairobi to Diani. However, I'll be doing it um, in part. This is going to be day one, Nairobi to Kibwezi. And then we'll be doing that until we get there and then a number of other stuff. So, Nairobi to Kibwezi. It's the expectations for this ride. So, as a cyclist, this is your longest stretch. And then this is when you're leaving Nairobi. So this is the first um, leg of the tour. Ideally, you're very fresh. If you've not done this before, it's pretty exciting. Um, a little bit scary because it's the longest stretch. I don't believe the hardest. I think it's just really long. Um, the terrain of this trip, I think, between Nairobi, um, after the first 40 kilo, the first 40 kilometers are e a bit relatively easy. Um, getting into Machakos Junction, obviously, there's a bit of climbing. Um, but from Machakos Junction to Salama for me, I think is the tougher stretch, um, a bit of elevation. There's a lot of climbing and dropping um, on that stretch. From Salama to Emali, Makindu, there about is a bit flat. And then the last 20, 30 kilometers, like from Makindu to Kibwezi, it's madness. You don't move. It's hot. It's windy. I hate it. <laughs> Those last... 20 to 30 kilometers. The only road that comes close to that in terms of that feeling is Namanga. The last 20 kilometers to Namanga are pure madness. I don't know. I just don't like it. Um, so how am I feeling? I remember that morning, I just knew, I don't know, I didn't feel prepared. Um, mentally, I had a lot of doubt. Last year, we were only six. This year, I was moving 25 people. Me and my business partner were both on the bicycle, which was the bigger, a big mistake. I think I should have um, officially chased from Nairobi. Um, he, I, I, he chased last year. So last year, I was cycling. So this year should have been my... Yeah, but I didn't know. I guess you once you keep doing these things is when you realize this is a no, this is a yes. Um, yeah, basically, that's what I remember. That's what I was feeling. And then I hadn't slept enough. So I knew I knew I could push my body to a certain point and then I would shut down towards the evening because my body can only... Because I didn't sleep at all, like not even an hour. I left the house at 2.30 in the morning. I just decided to binge watch YouTube videos till that time because I could, I'm not one to sleep for an hour or two hours. I can't have a power nap. That's just not how I'm wired. But that's, that's just me. I don't know about other people, but that's, um, that's purely just... When it comes to being physically prepared, apart from sleeping, I believe I did prepare physically for this tour. Um, I was just worried that people were like way more prepared than I was. I had just come out of an injury. I tried to get back into it. I was dealing with a lot of PTSD from my fall. So being on the bike was quite... It was taking a lot from me every time I was cycling. Um, 
I ended up loving my mountain bike more because it's more stable, thicker tires. So I felt more confident in that. But then I could, don't think I wouldn't have even tried to do a full tour on that bike. It's too heavy. <laughs> I hadn't trained for it. So physically, I do not know if I was there. But I think I was in a better place this year than I was last year. But the difference is when you're 25 people, I didn't want to... Like, yeah, I just didn't, I wasn't prepared like most of the people were. People had trained like beasts and I was super duper proud of them. And that was crazy. So today's plan, um, rather day one's plan is uh, 188 kilometers. The official stops, Nairobi to Machakos Junction. Uh, Junction. <laughs> Machakos Junction which is around 40 kilometers. That's around two hours of cycling. Um, the next official stop is Salama. That's where we're having our breakfast. The next stop is Emali. And then the last stop, Kibwezi. However, in between, um, with your peloton or the people you're cycling with, you can be telling them, I need to go to the bathroom. Can we stop? I need to stretch. Um, but the secret to doing long rides and tours managing time when if you make a stop make it as short as possible that's the secret if you do it like that you make it on time you'll avoid cycling um late in the evenings you want to cycle early in the morning and finish early um afternoon um and on a long day like this one till late in the evening at least by five we wanted everyone to be in kibwezi which happened actually i remember five five that is when i was getting to kibwezi and that was the last one so that was that so that's the plan my motivation um for this day was this is the longest day i won't need to be on the saddle as long as this so i need to get this one done and also for me i was like i've done this before so it's not nothing new i've done it before i've got this so nothing is good it's not a surprise for me i've been there so that was my biggest motivation. And then the other thing was, I can't believe we've done this. So we've eaten the whole cow in Mebaki Mkia. So the Mkia is the tour itself. And as a planner, I was very impressed. And I think we did a really, really, really good job. So normally when we do our tours, the biggest advice we give people is, first of all, you can't cycle without a helmet, even during rides. No helmet, no ride. Number two, you need a well-serviced bike, a properly <laughs> well-serviced bike, um, just before the longer tours. The mini, the shorter tours, they're okay because it's like 100, 120. You can do that, um, but as long as your bike is in good shape, you're fine. Then it's very important for us to insist on people having, um, what do you call it? Um, it's important that people who are cycling with us have an extra tube because we get punctures and we want to reduce the amount of time we are stopping to fix these punctures. So we just want to swap the tube. We'll do the fixing when we officially stop at the destinations we are stopping at. So that's the biggest thing. And then for more comfort during rides, you need really good um, kits. Some people actually do even buy kits before longer tours um, so that the padding is good and thick. Um, and another thing we have is chamois cream, chamois. Here we call it chamois. Um, I have mine is called. It's a barrier balm. It's supposed to protect down there because cycling from today, tomorrow, 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 you need to have something that protects that. So we've talked about the terrain um, for this tour. Um, the biggest challenge for this ride is, I think for me, the long being it being 188 kilometers can be quite the challenge for someone who's not done um, long rides. Um, that's almost 200 kilometers. That's mad. It's insane, but doable. Another challenge is there's a lot of heat. That's why we actually start really early. So the tour ideally starts at four in the morning. The heat is <laughs> it's insane. 
um if you're from kenya you know that ukambani is pretty hot so and that's where we are going and that's how we're going to be for today the first day and the second day it's extremely extremely hot the other challenge is tracks there's a lot of tracks on these roads so we need to make sure we are visible we need to make sure we are safe and things like that um so i remember we started cycling at four in the morning exactly at four in the morning we were leaving nairobi and the first stretch of the tour before the first official stop we cycled together because we want everyone to be together because it increases one second so i was actually talking about so the first stretch of the tour between nairobi and machakus junction because we we're leaving really early it was dark um and safety is paramount so we cycle together so the slowest people at the front so that we can go at their pace so that they are not left behind at any point then the faster people can be at the back um this is because when we are together um the safety numbers and then you're more visible on the road when you're many when you can see so many lights and blinkers you cars will understand or rather be aware that there's people coming um on the road we also try to not stop because people are fresh you have fresh legs so you'll be able to not stop um you'll be able to cycle straight to machakos junction without but this is because we've been preparing for a while so we, these are not beginners they're amateurs and elites um and people who just choose to cycle for adventure and not just racing specifically so that was the most important thing for me to make sure everyone is safe and see it's very challenging to do that while you're cycling yourself but anyway we managed to do it um i remember from machakos junction we now allowed people to just um go ahead they go according to your ability so they've been training so you know who you're almost um on the same um ability group with and then you cycle um with them and you keep to a certain pace um this stretch is actually where i had the biggest challenge because we had a puncture and unlike bikes that i'm used to this bike was a bit different i couldn't even remove the tire we normally have um, a quick release i wish i recorded it i couldn't do it because it looks so different from mine and that actually delayed us for quite some time by the time we we're finishing that and then heading to salama for breakfast we were an hour plus behind literally we just started there it was crazy i was i wasn't happy but at least we were safe and we were together so i hadn't lost anyone but we we're just cycling from the back slowly we've stopped we've done 56 kilometers i'm having a quick snack while they're fixing someone's puncture we are literally at the back. Everyone else like went, 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 went. So they don't even know we got a puncture. But at least they are So. Mm, breakfast is in the next. It's actually important. Um, good. It's good that this has happened. I can push the next 20 kilometers. I hope to come on a puncture. so that was that was quite a bummer i wasn't um wasn't pretty excited um about it so when it comes to like the tourism bit of this like landmarks so like when you get to machakos junction but because we've done it so so many times we didn't stop but there's normally a statue of paul gay um let's learn a little bit of history Paul Ngei is known as a freedom fighter in Kenya who fought against the British colonial rule. He is mentioned among the Kapenguria Six who were arrested and imprisoned for their activism. He is a household name in our country. So the next time you are at Machakos Junction, stop, take a picture and learn a little history about Kenya. Hope you guys enjoy this little history class. Um, another thing you experience a lot of when you go to Kambani is the landscapes. They are vast and it's 
huge <laughs> it's crazy it's just so big and so vast and it's quite hilly actually it's not so flat so it's very beautiful very beautiful landscapes another thing i really enjoyed um are the sunrises that morning sunrise is just so gorgeous um another thing i think i really enjoy seeing on that trip is the sgr going to mombasa it normally passes there um around the same time we are passing emali it just passes there it's very very beautiful um yeah despite the heat because literally the biggest challenge here is heat and the heat even comes from the floor you feel heat heat from the floor and then when the tracks pass you feel even hotter and then it's it's like someone is i was telling someone i feel like someone is blowing hot air <laughs> and it's strong hot air it's not just so it's windy but then it's not cooling you down it's hot that's that weather ain't it is not for me it is not for me some people said there's still some wildlife i didn't i really didn't um i guess i was too tired or by the time we were passing where they said they so said wildlife i wasn't seeing it i because sometimes you lose your mind. Um, I remember we had lunch at Emali. From Emali, I had a bit of strength, but then I didn't eat well. So my biggest lesson from this tip is I really want to learn how to eat while well, I'm cycling. I really didn't eat well because I'm not good. I'm a picky eater. And then apparently, so you're not supposed to have like meat because it doesn't... Um, digest quickly they get a lot of like beans a lot of peas and things like that so i really need to work on my diet um when it comes to that so one of the things that people <laughs> like not people but one of the things that quite fascinate me about um long rides is of course when you're cycling with people you chat you chat and then it gets to a point you can't chat Chatting for 188 kilometers, assuming you're going at 20 kilometers per hour. It's, it's crazy. But um, what goes on in your mind when you're not talking? I don't know. Um, for me, I normally just start saying, hmm, so the guys at the front, <laughs> where could they be? <laughs> and then I'm like, hmm, so why did I bring myself here? Wendy, what are we doing here? <laughs> Another thought is, I can't believe I'm the one who's doing this. This is mad. This is truly crazy. I say that to myself a lot. And then sometimes I'm like, what do you do? Are you doing such a great job? <laughs> Those are the kind of thoughts I get every time I'm doing like this really, really long ride. Um, another thing could be I start singing. I could sing to myself. Um, sometimes I think about my life. The things I'm, you know, like... We're at Sultan Hamoud. We're waiting for ah, that is we're waiting for Joy. Um, we have 15 kilometers to Emali. That's approximately an hour or less to lunch. Oh my God, my face is dirty. Oh, I thought it was sunburn. Or is it? I'm a new chafu. Maybe salt. Black, black. Need salt in a cast. Anyway, this is how tired we are. Our bags are on the floor. <laughs> We're waiting for soda. 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 Joy. Joy. I can't know now. Pateko soda. Pateko soda. Eh, hey, bueno. <laughs> I don't know why my face is looking like this. <laughs> Not me anymore. I could not shade. I'm doing a GB check again. Oh my god. Hmm? This is the best shade of my life. 
Yeah, I mean, many other um, things. So between the last stretch, I remember I got to a point, it was so hot. <laughs> we were using the car as um, like to get some shade because it was too damn hot. We stopped. We stopped a lot that last stretch. Like every three, four, five kilometers were stopped because it was too damn hot. Um, then later when I checked my phone, I realized people hadn't even reached. People, I thought people would be there by like really early, you know, like at two... But they weren't. They got there maybe just an hour before me, um, which was good and encouraging because it showed everyone really suffered um, on that last stretch. Um, that ride was was great. I, I was happy everyone was safe. That was that's the biggest um, take home for me. How I felt compared to the first to the start was I felt like I could conquer because towards the end. I really wanted to quit but then i pushed and then i was like okay so if i've been able to overcome my brain and and deal with it it means i'm able to do better so i can't finish the tour i actually didn't think i could but i eventually didn't finish <laughs> but um that day i learned that also my biggest lesson yeah this i wouldn't i i, I need to be on my bike more <laughs> that was my biggest lesson i didn't enjoy being at the back for the first time normally i don't mind but this time i was like no 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 no. i need to go back to the drawing board and put in more work during this uh for this trip the when we get to kibwezi the biggest thing is normally get people some dinner get them some rest lots of rest we barely chat we just chat during dinner the next day is going to be quite tasking it's the hardest day you go across the Savo and then you don't leave too early because the animals and the rions are going to eat you. So we don't want to be eaten by the rions. Um, yeah, and we spend the night at a place called Kambua's Resort. We've, the, last, the last time I did it and this time, cyclists actually spent spend there um in kibwezi so if you want a plug maybe that could be a good place it's decent they have good food um it's a stopover a good stopover they are clean and you get this whole trip honestly i didn't even use hot water so i, I don't know if but the last time i showered i think they had water hot water i didn't hear anyone complaining but i didn't use hot water um the biggest take home from this is day one is might not be the most challenging but if it's your first time, it's workable. If you've never done any long trip, um, it is workable. But my hands are clean, I'll just shower. Gosh. My home is a mess. Um, can I tell you about, not can I, let me tell you about the ride. Um, it was hard. Um, first of all, I'm one of the slower cyclists. And oh, oops, being a bit slow. Julia Chonyuma Kiasi with my friend. Then we, one of our friends got a puncture, so we couldn't leave. So we stayed with her and we were like an hour behind. No one even knew we had a puncture. So we've been chasing the rest of the group the whole time. And imagine if it's faster than you. So, so literally, guys, I arrived like an hour before me. Um, yeah, but, um, I'm grateful to God, honestly, that, um, I get to do this as a business, as a side hustle, 
Meanwhile, um, this this is emboldened beauty essentials called EB Essentials on Instagram. So can you brand please patronize them, patronize them. But yeah, I'm so exhausted. <laughs> Literally, I wanna cry. Like I'm to say, I'm gonna have bad Italy. I'm gonna cry. So I just want to go get food because I didn't eat lunch because I hated the lunch at Kibwezi. I only had chai and chapo, which I had had like two hours before that, so I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't even eat well, so I feel like I don't have energy in my body. But um, yeah. So that's what we gonna do. And then I'll give you a room tour before I sleep. But my desk is a mess and I don't think I'm gonna fix this. Yeah, so let's do let me get um lighting and stuff and then we do a room tour. I'm on the But yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And remember to feel the fear and do it anyway, all day, every day. See you on the next video. Bye.